Our tale begin around 800 CE, a time when the Khmer Empire emerged as the largest continuous dominion in Southeast Asia, nestled in the heart of present-day Cambodia. Breaking away from the Kingdom of Chinla, the empire's dominion stretched over parts of modern Laos, Thailand, and Vietnam. The cultural tapestry woven during its inception saw intricate connections with Java and later the Srivijaya Empire, enriching the Khmer legacy. Unlike other empires, the Khmer legacy is shrouded in mystery, with no written record surviving its centuries-long journey. Instead, we rely on stone inscriptions in various languages, from Sanskrit and Pali to Burmese, Japanese and even Arabic. The echoes of Khmer civilization reach us through archaeological sites, tales of Chinese diplomats, and the sagas etched on the walls of temples. At the zenith of the Khmer Empire, Angkor stood as a testament to its might and opulence. Serving as the capital, Angkor reflected the empire's diverse belief systems, including Hinduism and Mahayana Buddhism. The legacy endured even as Theravada Buddhism took precedence in the 13th century. Satellite imaging unveils the colossal scale of Angkor, dwarfing even the modern urban sprawl of New York. Embarking on a journey through the corridors of time, we explore the history of Angkor, intertwined with the fate of the Khmer people from the 9th to the 15th centuries. Alas, no written records stand testament. Our understanding is crafted from archaeological endeavors, temple inscriptions, and the vivid depictions adorning temple walls. The tales of Chinese diplomats and travelers further illuminate this enigmatic chapter. Enter J. Varman II, the visionary monarch who laid the foundation of the Khmer Empire. Born in the court of the Silindra dynasty in Java, he returned to Cambodia in 802, declaring himself the universal monarch and the god-king. Establishing his capital in Haraharalaya, now known as Royuos, Jayavarman II unified the region through military prowess, alliances, and strategic land grants, ushering in a golden age. Delving into the realm of legends, we encounter Jayavarman Ibis, a mythical figure known from inscriptions dating back to 770. Linked to the Angkor region, Jayavarman Ibis married into a local ruling family, leaving behind a legacy that intertwines with the tale of Jayavarman II. Amid the haze of time, the inscriptions of Pra Ko, Bae Kong, and Loliai echo the whispers of this ancient king. In the ancient tapestry of the Khmer Empire's history, the city of Yasodarapura emerges as a pivotal chapter. Following Jayavarman II, his successors embarked on a journey etched in inscriptions and marked by accomplishments. Indravarman I, who ruled from 877 to 889, expanded the kingdom without warfare, Fueled by trade and agriculture, he undertook monumental projects, including the Temple of Pra Ko and significant irrigation works. Then, in 889 CE, Yasavarman, I took the throne, a king hailed as a lion man, tearing through enemies with the claws of his grandeur. Yasavarman, I left an indelible mark by founding Yasodarapura, a new city near the old capital of Haraharalaya. Picture this city adorned with a central temple on the hill of Phnom Bakang, rising majestically above the plains of Angkor. A massive reservoir, the East Beret, added to the city's splendor, measuring roughly two kilometers. As time flowed, the kingdom saw shifts. Jayavarman IV established a new capital at Koh Kur, while Rajendravarman II brought the royal palace back to Yasodarapura. The 10th century witnessed the first war with the kingdom of Champa to the east. Jayavarman V, the son of Rajendravarman II, reigned peacefully from 968 to 1001. His era saw prosperity and cultural flourishing, with a new capital named Jayananagari, near Yashidarapura. Temples like Bante Sre and Ta Kale, built entirely of sandstone, graced the landscape. However, a decade of conflict ensued after Jayavarman V's reign. Successive kings faced violent replacements until Suryavarman I took the throne in 1002 after a long war against Jayaviravarman. Suryavarman I expanded the kingdom westward to modern Lopburi in Thailand and south to the Kra Isthmus. Under his rule, the West Beret, a colossal water reservoir, began construction. Between 900 and 1200 CE, the Khmer Empire's architectural masterpieces centered around Angkor dazzled the world. Satellite images in 2007 revealed Angkor's medieval settlement as the largest pre-industrial city globally, surpassing even the Mayan city of Tikal. The 11th century brought conflict and power struggles, 
briefly halted by Suri Vermont II's reign in 1113. After 1145, Suri Vermont II conquered territories far and wide, from the Mon Kingdom to the west, across the Malay Peninsula, and into Champa to the east. His prowess in battle, reminiscent of the mythical Garuda, marked this era. However, after Suri Vermont II's death, the kingdom faced turmoil. Kambuja's eastern neighbors, the Cham of southern Vietnam, invaded in 1177, ravaging Yasodarapura and incorporating Kambuja as a province of Champa. Also, in the annals of the Khmer Empire, a new chapter unfolded after the death of Surya Vermont around 1150 CE. The kingdom grappled with internal strife until a Khmer prince emerged as a beacon of hope. This prince, destined to become King Jayavarman VII, rallied his people and triumphed over the Cham in fierce battles on both lake and land. In 1181, Jayavarman ascended the throne, marking the beginning of his remarkable reign as the greatest of the Angkorian kings. Amidst the ruins of Yasodorapura, Jayavarman erected the grand walled city of Angkor Tom. At its heart stood the Bayon, a temple of unparalleled significance. Bar reliefs at the Bayon not only chronicled the king's battles but also depicted the everyday life of Khmer villagers and courtiers. Jayavarman's vision extended to well-known temples like Ta Prokham and Pra Khan, dedicated lovingly to his parents. This prolific era witnessed a shift in the state religion from Hinduism to Mahayana Buddhism, as Jayavarman embraced Buddhism personally. Hindu temples underwent transformation, displaying images of the Buddha, and even the iconic Angkor Wat briefly transformed into a Buddhist shrine. The empire witnessed an extensive network of roads connecting every town, accompanied by rest houses and hospitals. The saga continued with Jayavarman VII's military prowess as he reclaimed Angkor after the Cham invasion. A reign lasting 22 years saw the Khmer triumph over Champa in 1203, extending their influence across vast territories. Regarded as the last of the great kings of Angkor, Jayavarman VII's rule brought unity and prosperity. His construction projects left an indelible mark on the landscape, but more importantly, he was remembered as a ruler who prioritized the well-being of his people. Following Jayavarman VII's era, the kingdom faced uncertainty. Successors grappled with internal conflicts and external threats. The empire withdrew from some provinces, and the succeeding centuries witnessed a complex interplay of power dynamics. The 13th century marked a period of religious upheaval. Buddha statues were destroyed, and Buddhist temples converted to Hindu temples. External threats loomed, with the Mongols posing a formidable challenge. Yet, the empire navigated these challenges, paying tribute to Kublai Khan to avoid war. Jayavarman VIII succeeded Jayavarman VII in 1295, but was eventually deposed by Srindravarman in 1308. Srindravarman, a follower of Theravada Buddhism, ushered in a new era, marking a departure from the grand construction projects of the past. In 1296, the Chinese diplomat Zhou Duguan visited Angkor and left a detailed report offering valuable insights into the life of the Khmer people. His observations highlighted the coexistence of Theravada Buddhism, Brahmanism, and Shaivism in Angkor. As time unfolded, historical records became scarce, and the kingdom faced challenges from neighboring powers. The Thai kingdom's rise in the siege of Angkor in 1431 by Ayutthaya marked the end of an era. Angkor, once the majestic heart of the Khmer Empire, witnessed a gradual decline. The center of power shifted southward to Phnom Penh, and inscriptions hinted at Japanese settlements alongside the remaining Khmer communities. The final fall of Angkor was not a swift event but rather a consequence of economic and political shifts. Phnom Penh rose as a pivotal trade center on the Mekong River, while conflicts within the royal family and costly construction projects sealed the fate of the Khmer Empire. And thus, the echoes of a once mighty empire faded into the sands of time.